his fucking hair. Oh, whatever. Dude. All right, we're going live again, doing another episode of the Man Cave Happy Hour. We're waiting for Paul to come back. Uh, we Paul. met this uh, Paul. Yeah. Paul is like very cool. Yes. Um, I'm very excited to talk to Paul. And he's a military guy. And it's like Paulie he's, Shore. he's kind of a sexy beast. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> just gotta, he's got to throw that out there. Yeah. Okay, ladies. We'll bring it. We'll bring it back. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So it's uh, we're gonna do another taste. This time we're gonna do Knob Creek. Yes. And I don't need this beer. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> but I, I want to. I want to. That's I started the video early here, so I could turn it off video, so he's not distracted by it. Ah. It's a good call. Oh, look at that. Woohoo! She came. All right, you can get rid of those other dead glasses. Then. One of your many talents. Is that what you said? Thank you. <laughs> I heard nothing. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Matt, can you set that up? Yep, over yep, by yep, you. Yep, can you bring that one over here? here? Paul, you're going to sit over here. Right there. Thank you, Heather. Appreciate you. All right. All right. So um, just talk to me a little bit. So, hello, hello. Does this sound good? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Get right up on there. It's all right. Right, get right up on there like this? That's it. Perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, that these works. are really directional, and they pick up. It's, it's a really tight signal, so yeah. okay. it's just about two, three inches away. That way, we're not getting... It, the background stuff will be very much in the background. Right, right. And uh, the foreground is very much in the foreground. You guys are very high-tech compared to me. <laughs> I have a iPhone. I over, I'm, no, and but a, that's a thing. stand. That's what I got going No, on. and having a stand is really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> you know. We, and, you know, I've been DJing for 30 years. So sure. It's, like, it's just lying just around wanna, the garage, really. Just want to buy, yeah, just want right. to buy too many toys. Right on. So, yeah, we're, we'll we'll chat it up a little bit. Cool. And then yeah. I'll say a couple things, and Matt will give us a little bit of history about the distillery. All right, um, a little bit. Because what, 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 I want to talk about, you know, your project and, and, and the, th the things that you want to do because it's fascinating. Oh, cool. Uh, nice. How do we want, yeah, how do we want to do that, Matt? Do we want to do that up front? Uh, do we want to tease the drink and then talk to Paul? We'll, we'll and tease the drink. We'll talk to Paul about the relationships, and then when we start to talk about All right. the actual distillery, then we can work your relationship back into it, you know, your okay. relationship with your bourbon. Or <laughs> <laughs> All right. Profess we'll do. my love to the bourbon. That is... <laughs> Sorry. That is that's it. Uh, all right. Too many too many windows. Oh. That's the one I'm looking for. Chick, chick. <clears throat> check, check, one, two. Two, two, two. All right. It is time for happy hour. It is the Man Cave Happy Hour. Whiskey, cigars, spirits, and the stories that go along with it. I'm Jamie Flanagan. I am Matthew Fox. And we are once again at the Ambassador Cigars. Here we are. We are uninvited. We are so uninvited. Unannounced. <laughs> we are invading spaces. <laughs> Incapable. No, it's... I'm uh, not capable. I'm, uh, I, I ran out of U's. <laughs> I usually do a whole array of U's. Matthew, are you a little freaked out? Because there's like this big man mountain sitting next to us. <laughs> yeah, like a so. short mountain. <laughs> but it's a nice looking mountain. Dude, mountain. You, oh, are a, you, are a, you are a big hunk of man sitting yeah, next to us there. <laughs> you know, so And so. Uh, we want to introduce our guest today because uh, we were sitting here, we were recording... Uh, like we do, we just walk in and set up cameras. And what a beautiful thing, Paul. Here's here's the thing. Um, just pretend you're putting on a podcast. Yeah, easy. And then say, "Hey, I want a drink of this." And then they give you a really nice pour. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not really true. recording or anything. No, We're just getting really. Happy I like pours. your strategy. <laughs> that's, I, that's... I usually have my computer. I start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. uh, Paul was like watching us do the the podcast, and and so we stopped and we started talking. Yeah. Uh, and Paul has an absolutely fascinating story. He does. So he we does. have a bunch of stuff to do on the man cave today. We're going to talk about uh, an interesting whiskey. And a, and a really cool guy with a very fascinating story. Oh, so that's uh, that's what we have lined up on the man, man cave for today, Matt. What's uh, what's in the glass though? What's uh, what's on tap? Our juice for this evening. We're actually uh, <laughs> doing something we have never done before. Yeah, that's the just the um, taste, what's right? Just the taste. We we try something we've never done. We talk about how we feel about it, our own opinions. But today, we're going to venture down a little bit of Knob Creek. Okay, we're going <laughs> to see what Mister No has in store for us. All right, mm. that's N O E. The no. no family. Okay. 
So that's what's on store. Sniff, sniff, we're, sniff. Yeah, we're, everyone's sniffing right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna be tasting that. Um, I, I I was gonna have some facts, but I'm I'm not even gonna do that because I want to I want to <laughs> talk to Paul. Like I said, Paul. Yeah. Uh, you came in. We're doing this, and you're like, hey, that sounds interesting. So I'm trying to do some stuff. So, Paul, you're a military guy. Yes. What so, is, what what, what uh, branch of the military are you? Okay, so Army. I'm National Guard guy now. Was in the Special Forces Unit and Special Specialized Infantry Unit called LERS. Okay. So, yeah, that's uh, wow. two okay. things I did. Spent, you know, a couple tours overseas, getting prepped for a third one. Yeah. So you said yeah. you've spent like 36 months overseas already. It, it will be when I'm done with this so, third tour. So, oh man, yeah. that's a lot. Yeah. So stay safe, please. Oh, yeah, and of course. Thank you. Thank you for thanks. what you do. I just yeah. thanks for the support back at home, everybody. Uh, we appreciate it. It's astounding, it. and that's kind of what because you you're starting a YouTube channel. You're still you've been doing things on Facebook, yep. and you you said, hey guys, if a podcast, I kind of want to do that. I want to share these ideas. Um, yeah, it, so it, that's kind of what you want to do is is because getting support, right, right, and, right. and feeling supported. Yeah, as military guys sometimes feel less than supported and then sometimes it doesn't end well well exactly so that's what i was kind of talking about off camera was the yeah. suicide rate you know yeah and so what my channel is it's called the five percent understanding sexual dynamics so that's youtube i okay. love that yeah or so yep. what, what how do they find it on youtube so just just search the five percent the number five yeah percent symbol okay understanding sexual dynamics all right so what is five percent how's that what okay is that? so it's an estimation that only about five percent of monogamous relationships are happy and work out which unfortunately well, I mean, the, the, the just the regular you know divorce rate was like you know 25 percent 50 percent 60 percent it's like so just the regular divorce rate and with the military i'm sure it's even higher than that 60 percent right yeah so divorce rates are pretty high and then what we call um you know the happiness rates are even worse so yeah. you know divorce rates are approaching 60 percent but you can take that um we can estimate whether it's happy or not based on I mean, I hate to use this, uh, but sexual activity is okay. basically what it is. Sure. And so sexless marriages make up over half of the ones that, that last 45%. So you're down to maybe, you know, 22% uh, that are considered happy that are, you know, not necessarily sexless marriages. But, right. you know, it's just the idea of 5% is that we want to try to make, you know, have the most optimal, best relationship we can. We yeah. want to be in the top 5%, right, for right. our income, for okay. our career, for things, you know what I mean? Okay. Hey, top 1% if we can, but, sure. you know, like that, and that's just kind of where that came yeah. from. But it was this idea, though, and you start breaking it down, there's just so many people unhappy right now. Yeah. And that's civilians, it's military people. Um, there's guys that are uh, they're not able to get into relationships. There's females that are not able to get into the relationship they want. When they get into it, they they find out that they're not happy in it. Oy. So, yeah. So that's what we're you know trying to do. Well, that's got to be weird because because you go away and how long when you go on a, a tour and mm -hmm. it's not like one of my students who's like touring with like Ted Nugent is yeah. on tour. It's not Your tour is serious. Sure. And and so you're gone and you're gone for how long? Yeah. So it, it depends. I mean, it depends on what unit where you're at. But I mean, yeah. when I go, it's you know, nine to 12 months, wow. I mean, depending on what it is. That's not including two and three week trainings here and there, schools that could be a month or two long. So, I mean, you're talking a year, year and a half, you know, and you, yep. you, you haven't been home, you haven't seen your girl, yep. your wife, whatever the case right, might right. be. That's weird. You come back after a year, it's right. like, it's like, hey, let's get freaky. And, and it's like, <laughs> it, yeah, it's so like, it, it's, it's almost like a first a date all over again. Right. It like, can be. So, yeah. so how to maintain what we call frame yeah. which is basically as as the man you're maintaining you're leading that relationship most most relationships that is the preferred sexual uh, polarity sure. is that the man the male is leading okay and okay. um, that's what most females prefer i mean sure. uh, minus a one to two percent anomaly and so it's hard to maintain frame in that leadership when you're not there for a year Wow. You know what I mean? So yeah. how, how can you do that? And so it's um it's it's through communication and also setting up a series of values that they can get behind. Okay. So one thing that was lost over time here is is a set sets of values, societal values. Religion kind of protected that for a little while. I mean there's pros and sure, cons to sure, it. But sure, sure. Religion uh, protected those values and, and now those kind of eroded. Um the female um evo evolutionary psychology has told us a lot. Um, for 190,000 years, we didn't live past 25, 30 years old. Right, yeah, okay. So the male and female optimal, you know, mating strategy that we evolved with 
up until the last 12,000 years was pretty productive when you died at 25. Yeah, right. But now that we're living to 75, 80, right. you know what I mean? We have to, we have to redirect those drivers. Sure. So females tend to be very opportunistic in their mating strategy and very almost short-term thinking. Okay. So you go away for a year, that's really problematic. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so mate switching, cheating, all of those things are, are going to be in their high and brain drive. And these, these things all feed into that suicide rate and the depression and sure. unhappiness. And, yep. and so these, these Facebook posts that you create, the YouTube videos and the yep. podcasts you want to do. So what's the, what's the message that you're trying to get out there? Well, I mean, there's a lot of messages, you know yeah, what I mean? It right, depends, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's, it's really just not settling for less than what's going to be optimal and what's going to make you happy. Okay. So a lot of males get trapped into the plow horse um, mindset, you know, the self sex because as sexual strategy as males, we are, um, you know, disposable. Sure. We have been throughout history. We're the ones who go to war. We're the ones who, you know, women and children get on the boat and we're sinking yes. with the ship, you know, like, right, right. and so there's a reason we're disposable. We don't carry the baby. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. our, our genetic drive to want to propagate the species makes us protect women or want to have a drive for that. We want to protect the children, mm -hmm. which is good and everything, but yeah. then we tend to see ourselves as disposable. So guys will get into relationships and, yeah. and sacrifice and work two jobs and do a lot of things that are not making them happy. No idea what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, and then well, then they show okay, two up. Jobs. Right, two jobs? right, 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 right. Yeah, I got five. <laughs> and and it's okay, you know, if you're on your purpose and doing what you want. But they're doing a lot of things they don't want to self-sacrifice sure. for the family. That then they're not present at home, and they're not. They, you know, it's right. like you're always feeling like you're falling short because you're doing things for somebody else. So you got to do things for yourself yeah. first as your own mental point of origin. Mm -hmm. When you're more stable and happy and on your purpose as a man you're going to be a better partner for your woman and for your in a better dad so not and you're, you're, you're a very male centric uh view here that's the male um, and you, side so, of it. Yeah. so you there's, said there's female you know, side of it too, historically <laughs> yeah very true mm -hmm. the military is changing there's a lot more females a lot more females in active roles and sure. and, and in those dangerous places uh gone from their mates and their spouses for for long periods of time um, are females finding the same thing? Is this is what the the message you're you're sharing? Is it uh, does it work for the ladies as well? Oh yeah, uh, for yeah. sure. I, I, as far as coaching clientele, I about twenty. Although it's a male driven channel, sure. I mean I'm male, so that's kind of what ended up happening there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, about twenty five percent or so, of my clients are females. Okay. they're they're tired of being placated to and lied to. Sure. You know, it's like you know, oh, you know, <laughs> it's we we tell females that they're the greatest because they're pretty. And they show up and they haven't earned anything. They haven't actually had to do the work. And we tell them how great they are and how awesome they are because of how pretty they are. Yeah. And um, that's what we do as guys because sure. our mating strategy is, of course, to spread seeds. So we see a pretty girl and we're like, you're so smart. Tell me more. And she's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. an idiot. You know, or whatever. <laughs> and so they get conditioned. You know, unfortunately, society will condition them to not sure. have to, you know, not have to, to earn things to show up and and work yeah. hard and achieve stuff and then and, and it, it becomes a problem so know? ladies in the military can get something out of these videos and these, these ladies these, and these... civilians can you know i mean they're having what, yeah. what i'm usually working with women on is depression um, is such a like pervasive thing i mean yeah. you know what robin, robin williams is like the funniest freaking man most brilliant person i know and it knew it was like oh my gosh he took his life oh yeah it's like yeah. It's, it's all these hilarious yeah. funny people and sure. it's like the sadness that that that's underneath that, that sometimes mm -hmm. shows itself sometimes doesn't yeah it's uh you know as, as a as a husband you know for the past 19 plus years you know I, i've been able to do a lot of things that i've wanted to do because yeah. of the support that i've had from my wife oh yeah no question you know, and, that, and that's, that's one of the good. things you know yeah. when you're building out a relationship is to have that support yeah, yeah. you know and, and work together it doesn't happen overnight it takes a long time to it takes that, work that, right that yeah. foundation yeah. Together, and, so. and so that's a big part is um you know it's there's a tendency because of short-term strategies that are now promoted with things like social media sure, and, yeah. and a lot of the values that are being promoted now where people give up too easily you know what I mean yeah. and then they're not able to not able to see the fruits of the hard work and staying in a, a long-term relationship yeah. there's when you're living to be 75 80 years old right yeah. it's much better to have a partner that you grow old with 
that you're very happy with sure. most of the time. Yeah. You might you might have though even certain no, uh, no relationship is perfect. Exactly. Yeah, I can take no. <laughs> you you can probably relate, you know, but any anyone I talk very to, fun. 19, 20 year <laughs> relationships, you know, like there's you've gone through periods. You probably went through yeah. periods of months. Two to six months where things got really dark and you're like, oh, I don't know if it's going to work. And you have to start changing your strategy, right? But at least you're you're getting through it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're will this work or will I giving, be alive in the morning? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're not giving up, though. She's watching know? a lot of yeah, uh, NCIS. She's watching a lot of those. She's watching too too figuring out how to hide the body thing. and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, <laughs> well, that's great. So. Yeah. So as you as you move forward with uh, the YouTube videos and you're gonna the morph into a podcast, yep. uh, just let us know and we'll we'll let people know about it. Yeah, we'll cross um, promote. And so yeah, what what is really cool. uh, what's what's the name of it again? So people can find it. Yep, it's the five percent understanding uh, sexual dynamics. Okay, yep. and so we'll link that down and everything too. Cool. So now one thing people should turn to, not alcohol. Uh, good advice. Good <laughs> listeners, something to turn to. Then, then um, the alcohol. <laughs> we then yeah because then, no ever good conversation came out of hey have you tried this salad yet? You, yeah. <laughs> exactly but but we're turning to alcohol because we want to try some knob creek and what do we what do we call up matt so we call up well we're doing the knob creek we're doing the single barrel reserve all right evening. so the no family noe okay no family yes so when prohibition Famous was family. yep when prohibition was lifted in 1933 Whiskey makers had to start from scratch is what it comes down to. All right. right. So Knob Creek has been around for a very long time. The No Family has been doing this. It's very family oriented. Um, they brought real bourbon back over 25 years. Master distiller Booker No set out to create a whiskey that adhered to the original time-tested time way of doing things the right way. Okay. The right way. So, uh, and he named it Knob Creek. So every batch is... Uh, done in charred barrels, maximum charred barrels for at least, I believe, nine years. Wow. Even this one has got to be a minimum of nine years. Really? That it's in that charred barrel. Huh. Um, so it gets more of that sweetness, more of that oak flavor out of the, uh, the, the barrel. Not as, so, not as dark as the first as, time around. No, not as... Uh, we did one earlier. Yes, we did. Um, yes, we did. And this is nice. The color on this is nice yep. golden. Yep. It's not super dark. It's a nice golden color. It's a, ni it's a very nice golden flavor. It's a, it's a nice... It's, it's a light tan. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What? So, where are we at on? Uh, all right, keep going. No, uh, you're good. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be full flavored. Um, keep hitting that. But you're not cutting any corners here either. So. Okay. So let me get to where we need to be here. So the single barrel. Single barrel. Yeah, we're no, we're we're, we're playing we're playing in a single with just one yeah. tub for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a pre-prohibition style bourbon, is what this is. Oh, okay. All right. So they wanted to try to really go back to the roots. All right. When it comes down to. So. It's going to be an old style flavor, so it's unblended. Each bottle remains unblended, so it's not mixed with any other juice. Okay. Right. So it's going to be just a single thing, a single juice itself. Uh, do, 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 do. If you want to create your own, yeah, you could do that too. Your I think because we're here at Amb flavor. Ambassador Cigar, uh, and they they're always so cool that we just come in and set our crap up and start screwing around. <laughs> um, I think they they have like a couple of special bottles here as well. Yeah, this is not. So no no no, because we wanted to get the one that we could uh, get notes on and, and compare. So they actually uh, they they char their barrels. They do a four char. Four char. A four I have char. not heard four yeah, char before. Like Tell me, four. what does that mean? They torch the uh, the white oak barrels to a level four char to draw out rich vanilla and caramel notes. Okay. For the single barrel that right. we serve here, so a little bit different. It's a hundred and twenty proof. Okay. So a little 120. bit more. Hundred twenty. All yeah, right. So proof. yeah, we tried one earlier today and we hit uh, yeah. eighty proof. Yeah, we did eighty proof earlier. So Paul, we... when you're drinking uh, a bourbon uh, or a whiskey, what what do you look for? What do you what do you like? Well, my uh, description is probably not going to be as 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 um, good no. As I mean, you guys, we're reading but, off the fucking internet. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Impressed. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed already. So, I mean, I look. I, I look for. Um, I like a smooth finish. Okay. You know, so I don't. I don't. I don't like it to. Uh, to not finish well. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the main thing I look for. Yeah. I mean. So when yeah. I'm nosing, is there is there something that you turn to? Is there something you go to? Um. You know, I, I I like Wellers a okay. lot. That's probably yeah. my favorite. Not alone. That, now that's weeded. Those are the that's that's a weeded bourbon. Right. Or weeded whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, because it's not so. a bourbon because it's got to be corn. Right. Uh, so and, and just we're simple everyday well, drinking. Think about the man cave yeah. happy hour. If you're that? thinking that we know what we're talking about, we have the slightest <laughs> we don't. Clue what we're, doing. we're learning. <laughs> the premise. The, yeah. That's the good. premise behind the man cave happy hour yeah. is that we're kind of novices. Sure. And but we enjoy it. We want to learn, and that's why we pull in experts like you know. 
we were just talking to Neil, you know, Geraldo. <laughs> and, uh, well done. Yeah. Hey, well and, done. Uh, no, I, I had him and I was in and I said his name wrong. And he was like, <laughs> hey, you're sucks. kind of a dick. And I'm like, sorry, Niall. <laughs> 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 but uh, so, we, we, you know, we had him. And then uh, one of the guys from Jack Dan is we had him on talking about it. So and then like a, a lot of the product reps to right. teach us so so we can learn. So we don't really know. And that's that's kind of why we're fumbling through. And that's kind of yeah. the premise behind the man cave is that we kind of learn as we go through. Right. And, and hopefully we can get something going. Sure. So, oh, smelling good, though. Yeah. So what are, you, what are we supposed to be smelling, man? What we're supposed to, well, I'll, I'll get to there in a second. But as I'm no, oh, we were going. This, to, I'm sorry. I got yeah, off track. Your go to. What's your go to? Is there yeah, a go to? So my go to well, Wellers, Wellers we, or I will go with, uh, you know, which is more of a whiskey, but uh, like Jack Daniels, single barrel or nice. gentlemen's. I yeah, right. Frank, Ooh, the I had the Frank yet? The Sinatra. I've not had the Frank yet. Oh, oh, oh. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Put that on the list. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that on the list. I'm like, <laughs> Buffalo Trace. I Buffalo love Trace Buffalo is good, Trace. though. Uh, it's pretty it's good. It's crazy. I just love Buffalo Trace. Yeah. yeah. So the real nice thing about the climate on this is that it's actually, it's aged in Claremont. Oh. Right? Yeah. That's where it's aged at. Okay. In Claremont. But the age of it, like I said, it's it, it's aged for a minimum of nine years. Right. So it might <laughs> sit a little bit longer than nine years. It just depends on the stock and you know, the supply and demand of it all. So, sure. So that's really I'm trying to get to something else here on the in, in the intranets. Intranets. The intranets here. So. So you're, you're in the army. Yes. All right. Now reserve status, reserve status and uh, yep. you know national guard or whatever. Sure. Excellent. Out of Illinois. Out right of Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yep. yep. I got to plug in. And you were just yeah. in Poland. You were just in you Poland not too long. Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, I was picked with a couple other uh, non-commissioned officers to go to Poland and train their territorial army. Okay. Which is kind of like uh, our National Guard, okay. you know. And they they have uh, they just started that a couple of years ago. So we're the first trainers to go in. I was a tactical trainer with a partner of mine, and um, we uh, had a great time. I nice. made it made a, made a good impact. Um, they, they're good. They're they're good too. Like their trainers, there they got their they got their shit together. They know what they're doing. Fantastic. So it was it was a pleasure working with them, and very, uh, very nice. the culture there is amazing too. So that's I had a great <laughs> time there. I don't think I slept for a week. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You getting juice there, Mister Flanagan? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I got you. All right. Just trying to get to yeah, a quick little lie. profile here. Oh. As yeah. a, no, it's it's in. It's, it's in. This is a dead outlet. Oh we yeah, those outlets don't work. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll make this quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got eight percent, seven percent. He'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, <laughs> this is called professionalism. <laughs> exactly. It's called a podcast. It's right? a podcast. <laughs> if we this have fun, we you know. Things happen. Right. You can't make. You can't Just make unplug that TV. If they say anything, I'll tell them. <laughs> Let's go pound sand. <laughs> We're busy. <laughs> there we go. Got to throw that in there. That's, hey, look at that. When, that's see, right. The glorious thing, though, yeah. when, when it actually goes up. Sorry, Facebook world, but this could get edited out, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but why? It's fun. <laughs> we just take over the entire establishment. That's okay. I'm a member here, though. They yeah. have to be nice to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't really have to, but they are nice to me, though. All right. What uh, else we got? We haven't even tried this bloody thing No, yet. we haven't yet. So, we've been excited. sniffing it. We've been sniffing a lot of it. So, it's going to be a little brilliant. It's going to be a little brilliant Auburn, you know, look to it. Uh, it's got some slow leg. You talk about the legs every once in a while when you let it float around the, the glass. So, it's got some slow legs. But the palate, you're going to notice a little bit of uh, body on it. Being 120 proof. It's gonna have a little bit of heat behind it too, so you're gonna get a little bit of a spice when you uh, when you taste it for the first time. So, Paul, Jamie, let's take a drink. Shall All right. So, Cheers. so Sean, the owner Cheers. here at Ambassador chimed in, yeah. and he was like backseat driving. He's like, "It's Asian whiskey barrels." <laughs> there it is. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. For a minimum of nine years. Wow. Yeah, that's got a nice body to it. And some Ooh. heat on the back end. It definitely like this is yeah we did a lighter we we because matt and i will record a couple at a time yeah uh we tried to do the lighter ones first mm -hmm. yeah good thing we didn't do this first oh yeah zowie Woo. yeah there's something going on in here 
<laughs> I just like to chill mine a little bit, throw one ice in there. Well, and they we, say that, that's a little thing. bit of water will open it up, and you get a little more flavor notes out of it that way. Yeah. Too. Do you know the so best like way to drink a bourbon? I, how I usually do it is one big cool ice cube. It's the way you like it. That's how I like it. That is exactly. Ah, it was a trick yeah. question. No, because people get all snobby and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. but the best way to drink a bourbon or whiskey. I just know while I do it. I don't know how about <laughs> anyone else does it. Fuck yeah. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's got it. That's right. You know. So it reminds me, like, yeah, you might try to trade a few. Uh, you you added some water to that, a little ice cube. You might you, you, you might get a little bit of flan out of that, or a little bit of waffle mm -hmm. out of that's that. It. Now that now that you did that, did, did I us? did I break something? I no, that's not. The Sam over there. Oh, We're good. Okay. All right. Yep. So yeah, that's yeah. good. A little, little, little chillier. That's good. Yeah. yeah, a little bit more flavor now. Yeah, and well, that's a little the thing less with the uh, oils, and it like you get a little bit of water and a little bit of ice that opens it up. Right, right. It's good. So what are you getting, Matt? Wow. It's it is stronger. It is definitely stronger. You know, you know my palate always goes right to the caramel. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Because that that's just my mantra. Apparently, I, I taste the caramel in everything. So I, I can taste it in this for yeah. sure. Are you getting ethanol in it? I'm getting a bit, a little bit of ethanol. I'm getting. Ethanol. I'm, I'm getting. But here's the thing. It's just because it is a higher proof. Yeah. That's where the ethanol one comes from. Is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's not It's not overpowering. Right. No. Yep. It's, it's, got, it's fairly sweet, though. It's got yep. a sweet feel to it. It's really. that caramel. Yeah. It's got that sweet, you know. How's this mix with your Red Bull you're drinking? Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I, so, uh, someone actually said messing they, with they you. tasted pencil, like pencil shavings. In pencil. Pencil shavings. Yeah. Yeah, you know, those are oh. the, those are the folks that have that palate. We're like, hey, I, I I taste leather. Hey, I got an orange peel. Great. But there was Good one cool description. We were doing, stuff, you know? we were doing something recently, and it was like, oh my god, no, this tastes. Oh no, I was drinking uh, uh, grappa. Have you ever Gra had? Oh no, I've never mm. had grappa. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> you were with Dave. I believe. I was with Neil. Oh, you were with Neil. Oh, I, you I was with. I was Hi, with. Neil. Yeah, I was with. Uh, 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 the guys from Three Chord and Neil, and we were at this bar in Ann Arbor, and the owner came down. And Neil, the Three Chord guys, and Neil, he's they're gonna do a grappa, and I'm like, what the hell's a grappa? I, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a grape based thing, right? Um, so more on the in the wine family, um, and they said, and they're like, well, it either tastes like jet fuel or <laughs> kerosene. I'm like, oh well, that sounds that sounds. Great. Amazing. And, and the, but the no, it's awful. No, just and then the <laughs> owner <was> joke. <laughs> and the owner, you know, we were down in the basement there waiting for mm. the event to start. And the owner was just like poured up. The owner there at uh, at, at Sirius in Ann Arbor. Oh, it's okay. a. Have you ever been to Sirius in Ann Arbor? No. It's a cigar martini oh, or cigar yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. bar. Yep. Um, great, great place. But the owner super generous, and he like poured up like five glasses for each one. He poured like three different bottles. You know, poured out three samples uh, for everybody that was hanging out down there. And they was like. But the one smelled like, and I couldn't remember what it was, and then it came back to me. It was like saddle leather mm -hmm. back because when I was like in my teens and my sister was a horseback in a horseback riding. Right. And just that smell in the barn of barnwood and the saddle leather yep. and that, that smell and that aroma. And that's what it was. It didn't taste like that. It tasted like kerosene ass, but it had that <laughs> smell into it. But I've never, because people like a lot of times in the whiskey notes, they'll be like, oh, it smells like, you know, shoe leather, yeah, saddle yeah. leather, pencil sure. shaving. Sure. I never hit that, but I got it out of that grappa. That is like, because <laughs> right. that stuff is rocket fuel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever it is, it's, uh, ooh. Uh, but this, what I, I'm not getting, uh, you said, uh, were you getting a pencil shave? I wasn't, but oh. I was just looking at some tasting, some uh, tasting profiles, some reviews of it, and they were, they were getting some of that pencil shaving out of I it. I can see like the wood part maybe, but not, yeah. it's still more, it's like a lot of caramel and then, Ethanol, and yeah, I guess those, that's uh, those pencil shaving guys out there, strong. you know. Um, yeah, you know that they they've been trained, they've trained their palate that no way. shame in sure. the game, right? 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 Throw or at least they've found a way. descriptive way of saying it. I don't know. Right, right. So you know <laughs> the price points for for a Knob Creek for the single barrel that we're sure. doing today. You know, if you're out in the market, you yeah, want yeah. To, you know it's about fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on where you shop at, depending on what state you live in. But it's around the fifty buck mark. Right. You know, if you look at the twenty fifth anniversary of it, you know, it's a little bit more expensive. You know, a couple hundred bucks. But right, right. for just a bottle of it, you're you're looking at about fifty bucks. You know. So Fair. Jamie, I'm going to ask you: uh, kill, marry, or screw? Are you gonna you gonna never do it again? You gonna take it home? Or There's so gonna... many bourbons in the world to try. Yeah. 
um, now that I, I threw some ice on this, because normally when I when I do when I drink one, I'll get it with like a big cube or the or the ball. Um, so I'll usually do it on the rocks, and it's a, it's a, it's a little more palatable. Yeah, because that 120 proof is uh, hey, it's is, up there. It's 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 got some legs. Yeah. Um, they're slow legs, but but what? as I got uh, as I got the the. I, w I would do it out and about. I, I, I definitely do not creep. You'd marry it? Uh, Bring it home? I'd screw it. I'd do it out and about. I wouldn't I'd marry it. it. This would be a side chick home. right here. <laughs> so kill, Mary's screw. Kill, never so do it again. Say that. Mary I can't say home. whatever I want. But guess what? See, if I had, if I was in a long-term relationship, which I've been in long-term relationships before, oh, yeah. um, I could still say whatever I want because she knows exactly what <laughs> I, I don't mean. have a girlfriend. She knows. I just know, you know a girl I mean? if I'm with who'd be really pissed knows. off that I said that. <laughs> yeah. See, that's what I mean. You know, it's like... Uh, the power of the <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, it is an absolute pleasure. So happy we ran into you. Yeah, yeah. You know? happy I ran into you guys. This is yeah. great what you guys are yeah. doing. I think it's awesome. Oh, I, I appreciate it. So right. uh, as we launch it, we're launching a podcast studio. So as, as we do that, we want to invite you in to, to record. Oh, yeah. Uh, and awesome. hang out. Uh, we'll help you however we can because I think the message you're getting out there, uh, there's a lot of guys and, and, and gals coming home that uh, need an ear or need – Need well, a lot of people need someone to listen, at home. Need someone that's yeah, listen to that's, them that are here. Right, that, right. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, am, I cra am I crazy? It's like, well, yeah, but <laughs> yes, we all but are. find your own brand of crazy to and, partner with. And, that, and let's, get right, through it, yeah. let's get through it together be, somehow. Um, exactly. So, yeah. Well, and that's even like a lot of like today I did a 50-minute video. It'll, it'll launch on YouTube. I, I, going through my routine um, for state – management state being emotional mind state management as a man that's uh, such a critical skill set to have yeah. because your woman is generally going to rely on you for your emotional stability and your security and so when you are faltering and not providing that it throws her off you know when you come show up with a weakness she sees that as a strength that she now has to bring to the table and that can throw her off and uh, make her less feel less drawn to you. And as men, we want our women, our woman to be drawn to us, you know, and when we're not on our center and not on our purpose and not feeling emotionally stable or whatever, they start to get repelled from us. And that's when the nagging happens and the, you know, the, some of the fights will happen yeah, and, you know, yeah, maybe yeah, a little yeah. bit less affectionate and all the things that they're not as happy. We're not as happy. So managing your emotional and mental states critical. It is with veterans, but it's with civilians too. Sure. So running through that routine, you know, to, to, to how to do that using mixture. I, I'm a theist, so I do do a church thing, and I do my meditation and stuff there. Okay. But if you're not a theist, it still works right. as far as brain science is concerned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ah, church, all churches are just <laughs> corrupt, and it's money, and it's like, I, I, you know, I, I believe, you know, your religion, I believe in God. And, and, sure. And, I, I, I don't necessarily believe it's it's in, not a, I take a secular the approach to by the, the way so. the, the, yeah the institutions yeah. not so much well it, I take faith a, and and, right. and spirituality Christianity is yeah cheers man. yeah yeah well I mean I take a secular approach because I don't want to alienate anybody sure you know so I don't want to get into a debate over which denomination which whatever I want everybody to have the ability to be happy in their relationships so I'm taking a science based approach but I mean it does meld with like, so if yeah. I'm talking about state management um, related, uh, you know, meditation type practices, well, you're going to do it differently if you're a Christian versus if you're an atheist or secular humanist or some other religion, you know what I mean? But right. the benefits from a brain chemistry standpoint at least can be seen regardless of that. So I don't want to, you know, yeah. And same thing, communicating with a woman is going to be, you know, it's it's some universalities there, where regardless of your religion. So right, I don't want right. to alienate people, but you can pretty much plug, take the principles and take what you like from it, plug it into your faith or belief system. You know, and I, cool. it, it makes it easier too. Having a faith or belief system yeah. is easier. Thank you, thank you yeah. for your service. Oh yeah, yeah, thank you for what you're doing now, and you're serving again, dude. You're crazy. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are too serving <laughs> some. <laughs> some <laughs> Like, serving it. We're, so, we're they are serving about it. it. Yeah, we're, we're and, enjoying and it. Yeah. Thank you so much. So yeah, yeah. Tim and, and Sean chimed in. Cheers. You guys, everybody. Thank you, fellas. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks yeah. for being with the Man Cave App See you. Oh, there you go. Sean said, ask Heather for a glass of the Hornitos Black Barrel tequila. It was aged in whiskey barrels. <laughs> Can nice. we tell her it was on you, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Sean said. 
<laughs> it's documented even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean said. <laughs> So Paul, that's, uh, I don't know. Hopefully that was good for you guys. That was too, great. Man. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, and I tend to, when I get going on my shit, I tend to go, dude. So mm -mm, like, mm -mm. Just tell me to shut up. No, I loved it. <laughs> loved it. Loved it. <laughs> right. Good. Loved it. I just want to save this before I. Yeah. So save. Oh, cool. It's already up on there. Nice. <laughs> nice. Let me, uh, just, tag man, me in yeah, that thing. just man cave happy hour, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, get, I'll, I'll, I'll subscribe or whatever I do to the business thing. I imagine. But like, like I said, uh, we're we're launching a, a podcast studio. We're working with Podcast Detroit. Oh, sweet! And uh, they have studios right downtown Royal Oak. Right, cool. uh, you know where Chicka Shack is there, um, and yes. then that little Mexican place. It's like right, right next to that Mexican place. Nice. Um, the studios are right there. Yeah, they actually they have a TV studio in there as well. Uh, one building is a TV studio. The other building is a podcast. Uh, yeah. Super right cool. I'm going to share it to my, my page. Yeah, please. Oh, man. hell yeah. Should we do the same. Once we get it up and running, we'll... Uh... All right. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the support. <laughs>